Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today, we are shining the spotlight on this DC Multiverse Red Hood. Alright, so I feel like this is an action figure that's on a lot of people's radars. Um, this is the Red Hood as he's seen in Batman Three Jokers, uh, which is a comic book miniseries if you haven't read it. Alright, so, um, alright, like I said, I think this is a figure that's been on a lot of people's radars. Um, for one, the first release of Red Hood by McFarlane Toys, um, that's a really hard figure to find. And it doesn't help that um, DC and Warner Brothers kind of like mandated that, you know, McFarlane Toys refrain from including uh, guns in their action figures. So the first release of the Red Hood was based off of the New 52 version of Red Hood, and that came with two pistols. Uh, later, that same figure was released in a two-pack. Um, I think that might have been a GameStop exclusive. Um, and that came with New 52 Nightwing. And then later, they re-released that Red Hood figure again without the mask, and this time without the pistols, and he came with like a pair of swords, and that was under the, I believe, the McFarlane Gold Label series. So now we come to this, the Three Jokers version of Red Hood, um, and since the first release of Red Hood was so hard to find, you know, I think this is a figure a lot of people want and have on, you know, their wish list. So, uh, let's get started. First off, uh, the figure looks great in the package. Um, the one big glaring omission, like I said, is that this figure does not come with uh, Jason Todd's trademark pistols. Instead, we get a crowbar, which is still very apropos to the character. But it, it just stings, not getting his guns. On the side, Batman 3 Jokers, uh, Red Hood. On the back, we get a pretty cool uh, fig photography shot of Jason Todd, aka Red Hood, standing in a graveyard in the middle of the night. Looks awesome. Um, some other figures that are currently out are Dr. Fate, the Sean Gordon Murphy Bat Cycle, King Shazam, um, I believe this is Dark Knight's Metal Batman, and then we also have the McFarlane designed Wonder Woman. Alright, with that being said, let's get Red Hood out of his cardboard prison and get this review moving at full speed. Alright, we also have the trading card and the figure stand. Alright, so uh, first impressions of Jason Todd, aka the Red Hood, while he's still in the tray. Um, it's an amazing looking action figure. Red Hood is such a it's such a weird, simplistic, uh Utilitarian uh Util <laughs> is such a basic utilitarian design um you know it's just a guy in a red mask with a leather with a leather coat and he carries around a pair of pistols um you know he's a very popular vigilante in the batman family he's kind of like the rebel the rule breaker um you know he doesn't even though he's one of batman's former robins this is the one that does things his own way um you know he's not the favorite son like Dick Grayson. He's not the adopted son like Damien. Um, you know, Jason Todd kind of falls somewhere, not even in the middle because there's even um, Tim Drake. But Jason Todd, I think he's a, he's a really big fan favorite character. You know, he was the second Robin and he has such a pretty, you know, deep history. Alright, so first off, um, this figure, one thing that I'm, I'm noticing right out of the package is that, um, I'm not sure if my camera's going to catch it, but there's a discrepancy in the color of his coat versus his the plastic of his arm. Um, as you can kind of see if, it, if the lighting is catching it correctly, 
His coat here, it's made of a, a, a soft rubbery plastic, but it's a different, it's a lightly um, different shade of, I'm not sure what color this is. It's kind of like a very dark, like blackish brown, but it's, it's a lighter tone than his sleeve. So there's a, a little bit of disconnect here. You know, it, his jacket's a little bit grayer, whereas his uh, sleeve, it's a lot more bolder and richer in color. Um, let's get his crowbar out because I'm kind of curious about that accessory also. All right, so let's get started with this. Um, in terms of the figure's height, this guy stands in at about a little under seven inches. Yeah, really nice figure in terms of the sculpting. I'm very impressed with the sculpting. Um, I wanna say, I think there's some reuse going on in here. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure because I've been wrong before, but it looks like the boots and the legs might be the same mold that we got with the original Red Hood figure. Um, let's get the head into focus. All right, there we go. All right, so the Red Hood, he kind of wears this, like, it's not, I'm not sure if it's a mask or a helmet. Um... In this case, it's kind of like a helmet, and it's a very glossy, deep red. It's almost like a candy finish. It looks really nice. Um, it's kind of weird, because if you catch it in the right light, it, it almost kind of reminds me of Deadpool. Um, I think um, in the comic books, it depends on the artist who illustrates Red Hood, but his mask or helmet, it's seen different, I don't know, variations or looks over the years. Like some versions of his helmet, it almost has like the impression of like a mouth and nose. Other helmets are kind of like this, where it's almost like featureless. And, and there's other artists who also interpret the helmet where it looks more helmet-like than mask-like. But it's a nice sculpt. Um, there's some wrinkle lines towards his forehead. So it conveys some emotion. Uh, you can see the white of his eyes, and it looks like there's a little bit of black surrounding his eyes, and um, it almost kind of resembles, if I had to describe it, it's a very almost like Nightwing kind of look on his eyes, but it's a little bit more subdued. And when I say that, it's kind of like Nightwing. If you see Nightwing's original mask, it's kind of like an eye mask, but then it kind of has like subtle versions of the bat wings and that that's kind of seen here but the wings are just really narrow and thin and much like his namesake this guy actually has a red hood right there um it's kind of weird because the red hood here you know i interpret that as like a like a sweatshirt or a hoodie but it's a, a glossy finish which is kind of weird um, for me, I'd expect something a little bit more matte. And then when we come to his body armor, his body armor looks more matte. But I would, I would for me, I would, um, you know, anticipate something that'd look more glossy and metallic-like. Uh, this is a very plasticky looking chest armor. But, you know, I don't want to take away from that. I think it looks excellent on this figure. Um, the sculpting is superb. Uh, you have nice panel lines on his chest. The musculature is really well defined on the figure. So if you like your Jason Todd ripped with a lot of boy dents and abs, you got him right there. Um, he has some buckles running down the middle of his chest and torso. Uh, nicely sculpted belts. Um, if you're a fan of tight pants, Jason Todd here is wearing very tight pants. Uh, the sculpting's really well done. Nice wrinkles and folds. Um, nice detailing with the seams. And then you come to his um, knee pads. It's like a glossier black finish for his knee guards. And likewise, there's a glossy black finish on his shin guards over his boots. 
Um, you have some red trim on the straps of his shin guards that wrap around the upper part of his boot. And looks pretty, looks decent. Um, so a rib texture towards his ankle. Really detailed boots. Uh, there's a black glossy finish along the sole. Uh, nice trim and detailing. Yeah, if there's one thing McFarlane figures are, it, it's, they're never short on is the amount of sculpting and detailing they add on their action figures. Um, you know, for me, they're kind of like the standard of what to expect from like a nice premium action figure. Again, we'll come back to the coat. Um, the sculpting is really well done. Nice realistic fold lines. A nice micro texture to kind of create like a, you know, like the impression of like a leather coat. There's zippers, some buttons. But the one thing that kind of stands out for me at least is the you know the disconnect of the color I like the vest here or it's not even it's not supposed to be a vest but the rubbery part of the coat it's a lighter shade than the sleeve here the sleeves a much deeper bolder color where th this is a little bit more dull and muted so they don't completely match 100% um, nice detailing on the forearms he has some nice padding um, likewise, he has some knuckle guards. Um, here's his crowbar, which is very apropos to Jason Todd. So it has both sides of the crowbar. It's very, very disappointing that he doesn't have the pistols. It's almost like if you bought a Captain America figure and you got Cap without a shield. You know, as awesome as this figure looks, it feels so naked without have without him having the holsters or the pistols. It's such a huge, glaring omission. And it, it hurts the figure a lot. Because in all honesty, right now, for me, I'm look, I'm, as I'm handling this... This is a really, really nice action figure. It's a great interpretation of the Red Hood. You know, it's, for me, it's a very... It's a little bit more on the conservative t side of this character. Um, as much as I love the New 52 version of Red Hood, you know, some of the costume um, designs on that, it was kind of a little bit... Not, not that it was over the top, but it felt very cartoony in some ways. Like, um, you know... It, it had the black costume with a giant red Batman album, uh, emblem on it, and it almost looked like Batman Beyond. Uh, if you're familiar with like the original New 52 version of the Red Hood, as illustrated by artist uh, Kenneth Rockefeller, he had like the giant, like huge, like uh, blades on the forearms, which looked it looked ridiculous, but it was like super badass. But this figure, it's a much more conservative approach to the Red Hood. This feels like a vigilante or a superhero that could easily walk down like a dark alley and go unrecognized, you know, and just hide in the shadows. And then when he does come out, he's just completely badass looking. But at the same time, it's like, like I said, the omission of the holsters and the guns kind of just hurts the figure. Um, but looking past that, let's talk about the articulation. This guy's head rotates left and right. Um, he could look down about that much. He could look up about that much um, if he was to arch his back you're getting about that much um, in terms of crunching forward doesn't really want to crunch forward uh, in terms of his arms um, his arms rotate now once you reach a certain point is when it'll start hitting the top of the coat and it starts folding it it's kind of like that on both arms. Um, his arms will go out. There's a cut along the bicep, so his rotation. Um, he has double jointed elbows, which is nice. It it again, it hurts the figure so much to see that he has a trigger finger, but he has no guns. You know, it's like that with both hands. You know, he has trigger fingers on both hands, but no guns. Um, I'm sure that if you're if you're a collector of like Marvel Legends or GI Joe Classified series, um, you could probably loan you know Red Hood, 
Red Hood a pistol or two. Um, but for the most part, it just really sucks that he doesn't have his trademark weaponry. Um, in terms of his legs, um, they kick up pretty high, which is nice. They could kick out about that far. Um, uh, double pinned knees. So you get that. He has ankle articulation and some extreme toe articulation. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, he has a cut mid torso, so he could like rotate there, tilt a little, um, and he could swivel at the waist like this. Yeah, overall great figure. All right, so let's talk numbers here. If I had to rate this guy, um, oh, real quick, let's grab. All right, so let's do a quick um, comparison. So this is one of the original concept drawings of the Red Hood as illustrated by Jason uh, Fabok. Uh, Jason Fabok was the artist who illustrated uh, Batman 3 Jokers, and this was one of the concept designs for the Red Hood. And as you can see here, the figure's a pretty spot-on representation of the original... The, the, ah, it's a pretty spot-on interpretation of the original design. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just a little tongue-tied today. Um, so yeah, the helmet's a good match. One thing I've noticed with this is that... Alright, so over here, there's no designs on his eyes. What, what I was talking about earlier, it's kind of hard to see, but if you look at his eyes closely, there's the white of his eye, and it looks like this. But then there's like a slight design around his eye that goes like that. And then this is like filled in black. So this is what I'm talking about. So his the Red Hood's eye looks like this. You see the the white of his eye, and it kind of has like this black design around it, which looks really cool. On the original concept, it's not necessarily there. Um, it's been a while since I've read the book. Um, I'm not sure if this was actually added later, or if maybe this is actually the the toy designers like a little bit in of uh, embellishment. But I think it looks cool having you know kind of giving him that eyeliner effect around his eyes. It looks character look a little bit more sinister a little bit more imposing um, in terms of the rest of the design he has those buckles along the front like this one does um, he even matches he, like there's the zipper here he has the zipper right there a pocket here pocket there so it really looks like you know whoever designed this figure really took into consideration the original artwork from the comic book, which is awesome. But then once we come to the waist, this is where it starts to hurt. Um, over here, he has the R for the Robin belt buckle. I, I believe this might be the belt buckle from the first release figure. And then over here, we have the omission of the, you know, the, the holsters for his guns. No holsters. It makes the character feel and look a little bit naked. Um, as we travel down, all right, one thing that caught my eye that's really interesting about this is that um, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe these boots and legs are reused from the first McFarlane um, Red Hood figure. And over here, um, for the costume design, these boots, it's very much similar to the boots Batman uh, wears in uh, Batman 3 Jokers. So I'm kind of feeling that this was actually reuse, you know, they, they, instead of creating an entirely new sculpt. So for the most part, this figure is not 100% accurate to this uh, the original character design. If anything, it's maybe about you know 90, about 85 to 90 percent close to this. But I, I think that you know if you didn't read the comic, you're, you're not really going to know what you're missing. And you know, looking past that, this is just a great figure overall. You know, if I had to rate this guy visually. For me, it's an easy 9 to a 10. This looks like the Red Hood. The hardest pill to swallow is the fact that he's missing his guns. Um, you know, that's the hardest thing. Articulation-wise, art articulation wise, this guy does everything that he should do. You know, he has all the points of articulation. He has all the range of motion. And then once you get to his hands, 
you know, again, it's it like stings because he has trigger fingers but no guns. Um, uh, you know, do I think do I feel do I feel like you need this in your collection? Um, I'm gonna say yes. It's the Red Hood. The first figure was very difficult to find. Um, and there's another Red Hood figure on the horizon. There's the Gotham Knights Red Hood. Uh, that's based off of the upcoming Gotham Knights video game. And I'm curious about that figure, but I'm not too keen on the costume designs. So for me, it's not a, it's not that it's an easy pass, but I'll just wait till it's available and, and I'll draw my you know my conclusion once I actually see it in person. Um, for now, you know, I'm, I have a handful of Red Hood figures as it is. And this one, I, I kind of just wanted this one because I thought it looked great. And it does. This looks like an amazing figure. But the hardest thing is that in many ways, that even if you have this figure, it's not going to necessarily replace this guy. You know, this is the Red Hood everyone wanted or everyone wants. It's the one that's really hard to get. And it's the one that goes for a lot of money on the secondary market right now. Um, it's unfortunate that, you know, McFarlane Toys, that they, did, they, they do not include pistols anymore or any sort of guns. That's the one thing this figure totally has over this guy is that, you know, he has the holsters. He has the guns. And, uh, you know, this guy comes so close. You know, if this guy came with the holsters and the guns, I feel like... You know, you could get this guy and call it a day. You know, call it a day. But knowing that this, there's this one in existence, this is the one that's really gonna hurt. You know, if you can afford it, it's worth the purchase. But you know, the asking price for this figure on the secondary market's really high right now. Um, you know, if you're lucky, maybe you could find the two pack. And if you find the gold label figure, it's a cool figure. But you know, much like this figure here, he's missing the holsters, and it comes with a pair of swords. So I don't know. It's this. It's a, it's kind of a tricky situation right now. Like if you just want a red hood to fill out your collection, this will do the trick, you know, without a doubt. But it's just gonna hurt knowing that this guy came out at one point, and you know, we just don't have him right now. So, oh, so I don't know. This is a great figure. Don't get me wrong. If you see this, pull the trigger right away. It's awesome, awesome, awesome figure. And like I said, you know, there is some reuse here. Um, same same crotch, same legs, same boots. You know, the difference comes with the torsos. You know, this guy has a different torso, completely different coat. Um, all right, um, so that concludes this video. I apologize, I sound kind of off today. And I just woke up and <laughs> I, I woke up and then I, you know, this thing came to my door and I'm like, I gotta do a review now. So I'm a little bit out of it, that's why I'm like, all over like stepping over my words and i don't know my thoughts aren't completely clear and concise but what i could say is yeah get this figure it's awesome it's gonna hurt that he doesn't come with guns but chances are if you collect mcfarlane toys you probably have a pretty big back catalog of marvel legends figures and i'm sure you have like a small little bin of guns and you can easily give this guy guns if not hunt down amazon or ebay for like um, you know, 112 scale accessories and weapons, and I'm sure you'll find something that you could give this guy. You know, get show this guy lots of love. He's worth it, even though he's missing his weapons. Excellent sculpting, excellent mold, um, lots of detail. It's, it's great. Very stoked to have him. All right, so this video is running long. I'm sounding crazy, um, but that's me. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're a returning viewer subscriber, thank you so much for your likes, comments, and continued support. I greatly appreciate it. So until the next video, be safe, take care of yourself, buy lots of toys, most importantly, be happy, and good luck in your hunt to find the Red Hood. You know, awesome character. Love this guy a lot. I'll talk to you later.